Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. He's absolutely Jason. He's absolutely gay. He'll absolutely brighten up the darkest rainy day. He's funny and loves movies. He's smart and he's a Jew. He's an actor and an activist and wants to hear oh, from you. Right. It's okay. You don't have to. That's my song. Hey, welcome to Absolutely Jason Stewart. We have no headphones today. I just realized that they weren't here. That's why I was acting weird at the beginning. You're topless. Uh, yes, I'm, to I'm headless. Yes. I'm so excited. I have my very dear friend, Mary Birdsong, on the show today. I've been wanting to get you on this show for so long. I absolutely adore you. I remember the first time I saw you perform, and I was going with a friend of mine who wrote this song, <gasps> Absolutely Jason Stewart, Ashley uh, Hunter, who's a uh, musician, and she wrote it with her husband, um, Dave Kirsch, and we went to go see a benefit performance of Martin Short's show. Say the name of it. Fame Becomes Me. And or it's, It technically was called Martin Short, colon, Fame Becomes Me. Oh, or a one-person show with a lot of other people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you did this incredible performance as Judy Garland. Thanks. And it was like, I knew nothing about all of that about you because we met, you know, through some friends, mm -hmm. and it was such a different thing. I, I think when we first met, I, I didn't think we even know we were both in show business. Right. And uh, it was just, I was like, I didn't even know you were in the play. I was so completely blown away. It was a benefit, and I just went. And I was so blown away oh, by Oh, that was it. here in Hollywood. Yes, because yeah, I didn't see it in here. that was it for Jason Alexander's theater. Right, the um, Beverly Hills Playhouse. The what? Beverly Hills Playhouse. It right? was something, it was like reprise or something, or second act. Oh, or, was it that? Oh, or okay. Or revival. It was, I can't remember the name of it, but. I thought. He, oh. would, do, he would do revivals of different shows And there. they did pieces of, of the show, and it was so mm -hmm. great. What, how did this whole Judy Garland thing start? It started because of a friend of mine, a great singer named David Gerland in New York. He was like Mr. Cabaret, won all kinds of cabaret awards. We went to college together. And he's like, have you seen, you know, the Judy Garland TV series that was in this? And I was like, what are you talking about? Two years, 60, I think 62 to 64, yeah, something like on that. CBS. And, he, and we were in college studying, you know, acting at NYU. And he was gay. He was gay. And, How did uh, I know that? Yeah. And he was this little short, like feisty Jewish guy named David Gerland. And, and he was like, have you seen her TV series? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, Judy Garland. I'm like, wait, you mean Dorothy? Like, I was that person. <laughs> I was like some straight guy in, you know, Staten Island. was like, what, the Chicken Wizard of Oz? She did other stuff? Like, I had no idea. I should, like, hand in my, my gay-friendly card because uh -huh. I didn't know. And so he had these videotapes of it and played them for me, and I was just, I was transfixed. I was, Mesmerized, what is going on there? Yeah. Just that sort of weird electric current that was going through her and... um. And so then later on, I found the Carnegie Hall CD. And I remember when in the early years when I came out to L.A. for pilot season or whatever it was to keep sane, I would blast like Judy Garland in my car and sing at the top of my lungs. I think I was driving a rent -a -rec at, at the time, like <laughs> literally from rent -a -rec .com. Like that's what I could afford at the time. Uh -huh. um, but it, I loved it. You know what I mean? It was like something that was just pure, like. Hollywood entertainment. It was not at and the, all. And the most famous one, of course, was the one when Barbara Streisand guested on. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. get happy and uh, happy days are here again. Yeah. And then you know what I used to love is that they would say, "Oh, Ethel Merman says I was across the hall during another show. <laughs> I don't even know if that's real or what that even means." And they would come in and like, have a whole number. I just thought I'd stop by. Yeah. In the I, middle of your taping. Right. You know. Yeah, and that may happen today here now on your show. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's, oh, God. Maybe like Joyce DeWitt or somebody will be like, <laughs> "Hi, I was just doing a podcast across the hall." She doesn't sound like that. No, you sound like that's Ethel Merman. Yeah, but you do a lot of impressions. I do. And I want to show this little clip, Jake. This is from uh, you were on Conan, and uh, I, I don't. What were you promoting when you were on Conan? Was it? It was actually the Martin Short show. They came to see the show and actually asked me to come on, like. The next day or oh, two man. days from then, I was terrified. Well, you were great. Can we show this clip? This is here. We'll leave the uh, the, the voice on. And this is you on the phone. Right That's me. I was much thinner then. You know. See, I'm, I'm skin and bones. There I am. 
Johnson's that girl with the weird hair. Mm -hmm. She did Sex and the City costumes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do a great Joan Rivers. I'm curious if you Thanks. met Joan Rivers. Is she I aware actually, of your impression? Oh, yeah, yes, Joan I got to go first. see her do stand-up comedy. Did you do uh, it's a benefit yeah. for uh, PETA or Animal Rescue. And she was wearing fur, which was strange. <laughs> but um, <laughs> she was wearing like a, a baby bear wrapped yeah. around her head. <laughs> <laughs> but and then afterwards, I got to actually shake her hand and meet her. And, and she's like, oh, I love it when people do me. And and, she, <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't we all? And she, uh, <laughs> but literally, she like, Shoot yeah. 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 Thank you. And but she, and I swear to God, she ended her set by saying, "And my daughter Melissa is a selfish whore." Good night. I mean, <laughs> you perform as you do Judy Garland performance. You sing mm -hmm. as Judy Garland. Is there any chance we could convince you now to do oh, just a little oh, Judy Garland you song? Terrible. Come on, a little something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I was the, the kangaroo left that night. <laughs> oh. Was in her pouch, yeah. Conan, how I love you, how I love you, my dear old Conan. I'd give the world to be among the folks at this cookie show at NBC. My Conan, how I love you, how I love you, my nutty red hat. Your wandering child will wander no more. Oh, was it a size two then? When I walked right through Conan's door. Oh, Jennifer Holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Holiday, Jennifer Hudson. You, you really do it all. I mean, you sing, mm -hmm. you act, and you also do comedy. And I write. And you write, which is so and bizarre. And I draw. <laughs> I know. I saw those things on Facebook. I was absolutely amazed. I am the Leonardo da Vinci of 2015, <laughs> Jason. It was really sort of cryptic, that stuff. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's weird. I draw my dreams in the morning, so to like jumpstart my whatever brain to really? remember them. Yeah. I just try to go and be grateful and have some gratitude every morning, which takes, you know, everything out of me. Just <laughs> and to then do it's that. like 6 p.m. Yeah, like, right. oh, my God, I got to wind down, go to bed. So tell us about this series, Bitter um, Party of Five. Bitter Party of Five is a which fantastic. Which I'm so upset that I'm not in. I, well, I don't know you know, why. keep your fingers crossed and make your viewers go out and find us a big television sugar daddy and we'll make it happen. If there are gay people in it, I may have a place for you. There you go. And... Uh, so Bitter Party of Five is a web series that I started with um, four other people. And we met doing a TV pilot for Roseanne Barr. Oh, my God, yes. And John called. Goodman. Uh, it was called Downwardly Mobile. And I ironically. remember all about that. Yeah, it was a big deal. And oh, yeah, because was, it was going to be her big comeback. Yeah, and the first time that she and John Goodman had performed together on the same show. And I'm not kidding when I say at the taping... When they came out together on stage for the first time, people probably went they nuts. lost their minds. We had to literally stop three times because the audience was cheering so loud. It was as if our divorced parents were like, you know what? We do love each other. It's going to be okay, kids. Like we all were like, I'm healed. because <laughs> I was so surprised that he wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because he has such a movie career. He Well, yes and no. But I mean, I guess he liked the idea of the steady money or he liked working with Roseanne. Just like they have working all the time. I mean, it's a good, it's an interesting experience too. Like, I'm so lucky to have worked with some really kind of legendary people because you hear different things. And, you know, Roseanne has a certain reputation. She's like, oh, she's difficult. Oh, she's bitchy. The most lovely, wonderful, generous, authentic person I've, I think I've ever worked with. Wow. I, I, I know her from the comedy kind. clubs, and she was always very nice to me. And I also just worked with her in Vegas. Yeah, and a just couple no years bullshit. Ago. Like that's the that's if that's unoff, you know, if that's bitchy, then bring it on. You I know? just think sometimes it's you know it's uh, it's hard to handle certain situations, and I think when you're in a place, I think she, you know, I I remember she was in the comedy club at the comedy store one night, and she just came over. She says, "I got the Carson show." You know, and I said, how great. I said, you're not going to wear that outfit, are you? And you look like you just rolled out of bed. Because <laughs> she would never fix her hair. I mean, she just was not. She's so glamorous now compared to the right. way. She just really she was so. Beautiful now. Oh, yeah. I mean, she just was not about clothes and hair. 
You know, she, she is a domestic goddess. Exactly. She looked like she was just, you know, cleaning out the garage. Yeah. And and I and I remember what she wore on the Tonight Show. She wore a uh, uh, overalls, you know, weird <laughs> overalls or something. I thought, oh god, what is she you doing? You can't go wrong with an overall. Yeah. And then she wore one of those big coats or something. It was all so bizarre. And this hair that's sticking up, you know, that spikely look. Oh, yes, god. yes. Oh, it's just the hair gel. Yeah. I mean, you. I don't even know where to start. Sometimes you have such an incredible career. And I was watching uh, all of your clips, and everybody, of course, knows you from Reno 911. Let's get that out of the way. Let's show the, the picture of Reno 911, and you played. Uh, tell us the part and how that came about. That uh, was you. Did, I mean, you were on forever. It was. It was a good. Yeah, it was a good run. They had six seasons total, and I was on three of those seasons plus the movie. There I am. Um, that was our fancy uniforms when we were doing the movie for uh, Reno 911 Miami. Um, Did, it seems like a lot of work came from that in a sense, from all these people. Because there's so I, yeah, many creative people. I think so, people. yeah. I mean, and I knew, I knew um, the, the, the gang of, you know, Reno before, uh, before we even did Reno. Like, we kind of grew up, we went to NYU together, even though we didn't have any classes or anything. Uh -huh. But we also just got to know each other just kind of performing in this, like, alternative comedy scene after it was, like, almost like grad school. You know, we graduated from NYU and, like, got thrown into these weird little church basements and... Hole in the wall sketch clubs and, and you know yeah. sketch and improv and um because the whole show was completely improvised yeah completely improvised the only thing that wasn't improvised is when we would do these public service announcements these like local commercials um i loved those because the guys tom and ben and, and carrie too i think would write out cue cards for the people who were on camera and so we wouldn't see the cue cards until we were in front of the camera oh my god which gave it that great sort of bad like hey did you get raped once Shame on him. Twice? Shame on you. It was just like <laughs> awful, 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 awful commercials. Um, but really fun. And uh, yeah, I actually, I had to audition. And um, I think most of my audition, they had to interview me in character. And um, I love that. Yeah. We used to do again, a thing in acting improvised. class called Hot Seat. Yeah, yeah. And if you ever did, you'd sit there and the acting, the, in class, they would, you'd be this character and they'd interview. It was so much fun. Yeah. And uh, but the bulk of the audition, I remember, it kind of came down to: Can you restrain Tom Lennon after he is playing a guy masturbating behind a bush and tries to run away? <laughs> and I, you know, and I was strong. I still am. I'm like fighting Irish. So uh, because at the time I was brought in, mainly, the, I think pretty much the only reason I was brought in because they had a great crew already uh, was Carrie Kenny got pregnant, and uh -huh. so they were just a little worried about her doing some heavy lifting, and you know. It can be a very, very physical show. And uh, so they wanted another woman to, you know, kind of be able to step in if Carrie, you know, had complications or something. And what was it like? I mean, I always ask actors this. What was it like to just all of a sudden have a job and not have to look for a job? Unbelievable. That was like, I mean, what, what does that feel like? It's sort it of is the best feeling. I remember dancing <laughs> literally on La Brea when my manager told me that I got the job. And it was it was shortly after I had just called my dad and said, um, not like, can you give me any money? Because he wouldn't. But um, <laughs> uh, but just I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I all I can see is like a waitressing ape and chasing me and, you know, uh. in a dark alley. And because I did a lot of waitressing, you know what I mean? And I really, really worked a long time before I even got an agent or any of that. And, uh, and not for lack of trying. It just wasn't clicking i was kind of always 45 like even when i was 18 so i think it confused people i sounded like this uh -huh. and you know and so it was a wonderful feeling i remember dancing in the street and i remember like still to this day like if i can buy like a six pack of paper towels and like not even look at the price i feel rich oh god you know and that is a blessing and i grew up like very you know very poor and, you know, uh. sometimes on the dole, like total country star. And, you know, I should have been a country star. But you were in your own mind. There you go. But, you know, it, it's a great blessing in a way because now take, I feel wealthy. Let's take a let's take a break. We'll come back and talk with that. We're here with Mary Birdsong on Absolute Jason Stewart. Please stay with us. Don't change that channel. Oh, my God. There's much more. I'm Valerie Landsberg, and most people know me as Doris from the television series Fame. 
You're watching Absolutely Jason Stewart on T Radio V. You're watching Jason Stewart on TV Radio V. Fame! Should we jump in there at the last one? Grant, I'm Grant Reynolds. Grant Reynolds. Oh. I don't know what to do with my hands. I mean, this is pretty much just like the same thing. Oh, wait, this is. No one wants to see her ninny goat. He's like a bear. He's like a big bear, yeah. is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we're we'll starting. If you don't like the right pizza, go f yourself. <laughs> you never know who shun a shun 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 shun. Absolutely, I Jason think that my Stewart. show is better than yours. Yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Yes, it is. No, no it's not. Yes, it is. No, no it's not. not. The only thing that masks alcohol while you're driving is peanuts. 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 Have peanuts. lots of <laughs> when you're drinking. It wouldn't be the first time Langdon had Skippy in his mouth. Is that your dog? T Radio, baby. <laughs> Throw another log in the fire. It's not hot enough back here. T Radio V, radio and TV. Ay ay ay. Uh. Hi, this is Casey Abrams from American Idol, and you are watching T Radio V. That was too corny. I don't. I loved it. Hi, I'm Francis Fisher, and you're watching Absolutely Jason Stewart on T Radio. V. So it's well, T Radio in a V? Yeah, yeah. T Radio V. I've been TV here six with radio. Months. It's okay. So in the between. TV goes inside the, the No, the radio's it. inside the TV. And then, so it's both. Yeah. And that's my show. That's your show. And you just did my show. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm so excited. <laughs> I feel like we're crashing into a Titanic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to Absolutely Jason Stewart with my guest, Mary Birdsong. You know, I just, I have to say, I adore you so much. I adore you. But I really do. Weird? I think I like you more. <laughs> uh, I have. I just, you don't realize how much people, you know, off camera, you've been so, you know, off camera. Uh, you've been so great to me. Just the little things that you, you've said. Well, thank you. Such, such, a, you know, kernels of, of, I just, you so understand me. I feel like. It's just like a shortcut with you, which is really interesting. We you are like twins. You don't meet those kind of people very much. And I'm in love with your career. You know, I, I'm in Wonderland. Is that the name of the movie? Uh, oh, do you mean Adventureland? Adventureland? Is that what it was? The, Where you play the, 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 the new evil wife? The stepmother? Yeah. Oh, my Isn't that God. is a great movie? No, it was, I, for some reason, I thought it was Wonderland. It was not. It was Adventureland. Adventureland, yeah. You play the mom, yeah. the stepmom in this movie. With a great movie, wig. And you're just so awful. Isn't it awful and so and self involved? Uh, yes, it was. It, and I thought to myself, you and I play very similar roles. It's the role we're always in charge of something, but yet we have no power. Yes. And I think that's interesting. Just an interesting thing. Disempowered in life. middle management. Exactly. Resentful. The second wife. Who's she? Why is anybody paying yeah. attention? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I love playing those parts. Oh like, God. Yeah. And I've always said like, the, it's the ingenues you have to watch. It's the leading men and the ingenues that that usually in life they're just giant assholes and the people who play the bitches and the monsters and all that like if you find somebody who plays hitler in a show they're probably the sweetest person in real life because i think at least for me like i am such a sorry i'm just such a pussy when it comes to like like standing up for myself and conflict resolution and all that stuff and like really having good boundaries so that when i get to play somebody on a show that's like, you know what, this toast is burnt. Like, I would never do that in a restaurant. So I love See, getting to do that. See, because you're not, you don't come from the Jewish background where, where I go, you know, I'm sitting in a restaurant on Sunday having dinner with my brother, and I swear to God, I said, what is he gonna, what, what's he going to find wrong around this place? <laughs> and, he, and he did, of course, you know. <laughs> you know that what he, of course, it happened to him. What he ordered wasn't on the menu anymore, and right, they came right, back, right, and they had right. to tell him. And Jesus Christ, and his wife was upset because now all the dinners are not going to come at the same time. Where are you going to put it? Well, we'll put it, we'll have it he heated. It's going to sit there. It's going to be all dried out. <laughs> By the time this comes, 
you know, and it's like, that's the way I grew up. Right. So I had to learn to, I'm the opposite of that. I had to learn to pull it back. Now, you, um, you were talking about being a poor kid growing up, and I really saw that in your work in the Nick. I'm going to say thank you. Because <laughs> you, you could see that. Question mark? Well, you see, this is a person who comes, this is, was an Irish woman, right? Yeah, yeah. Who, wh- whose husband had gotten really ill and had to be. Her son, actually. Oh, was it her son? Yeah. I forgot, it was last season. And you had to, you didn't want him to be, oh, what, you almost I broke. Just, I just broke the table. You broke the whole thing, it's okay. Um, I can't have nice things. <laughs> That's what happens when you grow up poor. You piece of trash. <laughs> you broke the table. You now were- I'm not going to get ass back. <laughs> He's going to give me a bill. It's Okay. Um, you were so good in this. It's funny that you're doing the bits while I'm telling you how great you are. <laughs> you were so great in this. And tell tell everybody at home, because I know the whole uh, way you got that job. Oh, the Nick? Yeah, because they, they, they did not want you. This, this is a great story, especially for actors, but honestly for anybody. For anybody who wants to go after something and get something that seems unattainable right, for them. Right, right. And, and that's what we do sort of in our business, Yeah, which is sort of like a mirror to other people. I mean, it, I think the germ of it started, I had recently signed with a new agency, and I'm not the type to be like, you know what, I'm going to take you out to lunch. Let's talk. Let's go to coffee. But I was like, you know what, I really should try and like get to know these people and, and you know, just sit down with them one-on-one because that's so rare these days, right? So I took a, one of the agents out for lunch or something, and I, I, I remember mentioning, like, God, you know what I really want to do is, like, period stuff, like historical drama and, like, comedy and stuff like that. I love anything with, like, old-fashioned costumes, and it's so stupid, but nobody knows that about me. I told him that. Then you love costumes. I do. Um, I would probably do that if I wasn't an actress. But he, and then later he said, hey, Mary, I read this script. It's, you know, it's called The Nick. It's coming on uh, on Cinemax soon. It's a new show. It's a really good script. And you thought I, it was half porn because that's what you think of when right, you think Cinemax. Right, Skinemax. Yeah. And so I, but it was at a time when they're really trying to, you know, sort of spiff up its, HBO it. Yeah. Its, yeah. And and so the script was amazing. There's this great part of a nun uh, who, and I can't remember the name of the actress who they ultimately well, she, she got, was but she's nun, amazing. She was a nun who, go ahead, you tell it. She's a nun who, um, out of mercy, more than her, you know, uh, religious beliefs goes around the you know the slums performing abortions because she sees these Catholic women who are not allowed to use birth control. Their husbands keep getting them pregnant, and every time they get pregnant, the husband gets angrier and angrier because he can't feed another baby. But then he has sex again with her and unprotected, and it's this vicious cycle. It's awful. And it's and so she it's awful. out of it's frightening. yeah out of mercy, um, she does this you know, and it's. It's just this really interesting character. I think she smokes a cigar or something, too. She's just a real hardcore, you know, tough nun. And she's very much involved in the second season. I don't know if you're watching it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I knew she would be like a big deal character. Yeah. And so I wanted to audition for that. The agent wanted me to audition for that. He knew the casting director. He tried three times to get her to see me. And she probably was looking at my headshot in which you're trying to look super cute and young, right? That's the goal of every headshot. But like yourself, you know. Or just even look at any of, of your other work. No period stuff. Right, right, Everything right. Everything very right. funny, very quick, very snappy. But very modern. Smart. And, you know. Yeah. And so, and so she was like, I love Mary. You know, she's a great actress. She's not right for this. And so he said, you know what? I think we should put you on tape. Wow. He's like, she just doesn't know what you can do. Wow. And I was like, I love the way you think. Okay. Bill Valoric is his name, by the way. And he's amazing. He's an innovative artist. And he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And... And so just that small little like grain of belief in me, I think, and that confidence that he had made me kind of have the confidence. Oh, yeah. When someone stands behind you. Yeah. And so I remember I put myself on tape and lo and behold, um, the casting director loved it and Steven Soderbergh loved it and the other producer loved it. And I remember I woke up the next day really late and it, there were all these messages of like, would you be willing to like, you know, uh, if you didn't dye your hair, would it be gray? Uh, would you be willing to have brown eyes? It turned out I looked a lot like the um, the younger actress. Um, now I'm blanking on her name, but Bono's daughter, uh-huh. the Irish girl oh, who yes. is She's the main beautiful. like love interest of, of Clive Owen. She's amazing on the show, and plays a girl from West Virginia and like flawless. And but we kind of had that similar like small mouth, rounded face, you know, Irishy thing. And there were some a lot of scenes that they had together, and they said it just would be too. Did weird. you wear a wig in it or? Uh, in, in the Nick? Yeah. No, that wound up being my own hair. Okay. And so 
they said, you know, she's just, unfortunately, she just looks too much like this girl for, to play the nun. But we'll find something for her because we really like her. And I was like, yeah, 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 we'll see. I just was so crushed because I came wow. real close. And, um, and lo and behold, they were, they were being, you know, serious. They were telling the truth because they came back a couple of months later or something or a month later and and they said what about this part and I went in and I auditioned and and they cast me and it was just this great sort of scenery chewing you oh, know but it's just, it drunk just... uh racist Irish woman who's a grandmother who has weird like bad teeth and she starts a race riot and it just and her son is you know she's got blood all over her skirt and she's crying and you know it just it was, and it's such a good show it's, how did you how was the experience of doing it Amazing. You know, just having to cry and having to go to that kind of a place because that isn't often, you know, doesn't often happen. It was really wonderful. And I don't know what happened. Years ago, I was not able to do that. Um, I don't think I, I didn't, I couldn't face it myself like that sort of dark or sad parts of my right. own personality or whatever. Or, um, but now, but I think being older and sort of having um, faced that stuff and done a lot of work on myself and all that stuff. Um, I kind of relish that opportunity to kind of bring that stuff up and and really just go there because it's so there are so few opportunities in life where you get to do that. You know what I mean? Right. Um, unless you're like screaming into a pillow, you know. <laughs> but well, let's let's take a look. Why don't we on the demo reel? We're gonna see, we're gonna see the uh, divorced mom first, and we'll see some clips from some of the work you've done. And I think it's just some wonderful stuff. Thanks. I'm gonna take a moment. Here we go. Mary Bird's song. Hey, that's me. Actress. It's fun because it's really more like dancing than exercising. You know, I, I have a blast. I've been so trying much. to get him to go with me, but he won't go. You know, if you're not Josh Payas, he's a yeah, great, I like great actor. My knees that high. Yeah, I've noticed. And this chick, I can't remember her name. Really? <laughs> kidding. Kristen Stewart. You know, is the Astros and the Wallsteins. Twilight for those who don't know her. Can I get anyone a he refresher? Fun. Yeah. Francie, these pieces. Oh, look. I love them. So great. Oh, those there. I love those. I think they are so fun. I, I love what you've done with the house. Thank you. It's, it's clean. I thought the house was a lot nicer the way my mom used to have it. <laughs> Is that some kind of joke, Emily? <laughs> no. It's not. I think I think you <laughs> owe me an apology, right now. I don't know you shit. All right, okay, you know what, give me the drink. Look, you weren't invited and I don't want right, you here, okay? Right, stop you know, I wasn't fine. invited to this yes, party. Yes, you weren't Francie. invited, okay? Right. Frankly, I don't like you coming in here to oh. say whatever the hell you want, okay? Oh, I'm right. sick and tired of your behavior, you ungrateful <sighs> little bitch. I'll give me the drink. Okay, Emma. Now you just... Oh, God damn it! Before I start, I'd like for us all to take in a deep breath. She wasn't at the shower. It's very important dreaming. to reset our third eye, right? And connect to the primal. <laughs> Before I present I the pleasure aids. Now, are these pleasure aids yeah. are best used when in a tantric meditative state. What we have here we have edible panties. Now, ladies, you what pleasure party would be complete without glow in the dark thunder the beads? Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> and I'm those out, princess. <laughs> oh, and they match your the earrings. Match. We did so many takes. Like I was. Okay, I am all for so many Singing books. the Star Trek right? thing. I mean, it was ridiculous. We had so much not fun. Proud of. And Malcolm McDowell is like one of my favorite acting oh, partner, partners in the world. He is so fun. Is he? Very flirty. Loves to improvise. Is that your hair? Yeah. I don't think you quite understand. I had to cut it for um, an HBO pilot that Barry Sonnenfeld was directing called Suburban Shootout. I remember I was very torn. I was like, oh my god, that's like getting a mastectomy. The sizzle. It looks really cute. Yes. The sizzle. Mm -hmm. It's bad taste. Is what it is. He was okay, so mean to me. Not to uh, Malcolm, but the ca bad but his taste, character. The that drives he was just the viciously dream. mean. Well, I think it's a mistake. When I want your opinion, and I'll I had a little bit of a crush on Rob Zombie. <laughs> okay, yeah, a big one. I'll but he's married. And go sit in the car. Go on. Get Ow. your ass a Very in nice there. guy. Things people say to me. <laughs> people say all kind of things to me. It's the ninety-nine cent whore. But mostly they just say. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Take it, bitch, you fucking whore! Fuck! Yeah! You fucking whore! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Imagine that Sniffy is go. drugs. I 
how you doing, Sniffy? And David Lincoln. And we are just stuffed. sweet on each other. We'll and we're walking down the everything. street. And then all of a sudden, he gives me a good night kiss. When I do get recognized for Reno, I'm almost like, you know what? Fuck well, you. Well, that's just wonderful. <laughs> and I'm feeling great that now. That happened the other day, actually. I was interviewed by TMZ. That. Isn't that crazy? But he doesn't seem to be cooperating. And that's when you know that drugs just really aren't aren't worth um, the... <laughs> Keeping it classy, no, it's getting humped by a dog. So many wonderful things. You're now in the film Free Health yeah. with Julianne Moore and uh, and El- Ellen Page. Ellen Page, who just came out, a and Steve Carell, and Steve Carell, who just Amazing. crazy. What was he like? He, I didn't talk to him that much, only because I was so nervous to be around him, because I just admire him so much. Wow. So, and I was kind of, I think I was even sitting next to him. And I also am conscious of like when I meet big stars, I just have a feeling that so many people want something from them that I tend to just kind of hold back, maybe almost too much. Uh-huh. Um, I just try, always try to treat everybody the same. Yeah, I just, and I try to do that, but then I just get too self conscious. So I'm like, hey, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I just don't make any you sense. You play Ellen's mom. I play Ellen Page's mom. And it's funny, she, Ellen, looks almost identical to my uh, sister, Carrie. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's striking, if you, if you look at pictures. Um, and the, the writer, Ron Niswaner, Niswaner, Niswaner? Right, who, who wrote Philadelphia. Yeah, he wrote Philadelphia. I believe he won an Oscar for it. Yeah, he did. Um, he, uh, that, the reason that even came about is because I agreed to be in this documentary he was making back when I was doing Love, Loss, and What I Wore. So I felt like he kind of owes me a favor. I'm going to put myself on tape for this and see if he'll, you know, and he wound up, I'm not, I'm not saying that's why he cast me, but, um, wow. but they, and it wasn't even his decision, I'm sure. Cause the writers never get this that. This is the follow-up of. film for uh, Julianne Moore. I think it's the first big starring role she's done since she won the Oscar. I think so. Yeah. And she's amazing and, in it. And, and the nicest person in show business. Yeah. Oh my God. She's so, doing these horrible like death scenes and like, you know cancer ridden body and then we yell cut and she's like so tell me the recipe for cornbread that you were saying about like she's just so (laughs) hilarious okay we're gonna take a break we're gonna be right back with mary bird song here on absolutely jason stewart i love hearing that god i wish i could do that right uh we'll be right back please stay with us I'm Grant Reynolds. Grant Reynolds. Oh. I don't know what to do with my hands. I mean, this is pretty much just like the same thing. With- oh, wait, this is. No one wants to see her ninny goats. <sighs> like a yeah. bear. He's like a big bear, yeah. is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, we'll start. You don't like the right pizza? Go f- yourself. <laughs> you never know who shouldn't have shot Shin Jan Chai. Absolutely, Jason. I think my show is better than yours. Yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> the only thing that masks alcohol while you're driving is peanuts. Peanuts? Peanuts? Have peanuts. lots of <laughs> when you're drinking. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time Langdon had Skippy in his mouth. Is that your dog? He radioed me. <laughs> <laughs> Throw another log in the fire. It's not hot enough back here. T Radio V, Radio and TV. Ay, ay, ay! Hey, what's up? I'm Casey Abrams from American Idol. You're watching Absolutely Jason Stewart on T Radio V. It's a good take, right? You sounded like you were completely like in a trance, like you were. Did, did you, you feel? Did you feel it? Did yeah. you feel and the what, vibes? And what's with the fakakta hair? You don't you're, like you're it? You're a Jew, you're not. Yeah, well, yeah hey, your mother would be I don't so think upset. I, you shouldn't be taking. I know. Look at, look at everyone. Look at the back of this hair. Dear God, get a brush. Get a brush. I'm Jason Stewart. We're on T Radio V, TV and the radio with the hair sticking out like some sort of homeless person. Listen, I'm sorry. I have hair.
Just Do It with my guest, Mary Birdsong. And when I first met you, I think you had just done The Descendants with George Clooney. Be. Now, working with Alexander Payne, who is the director that everybody in the entire universe wants to work with, Sideways, Nebraska, <coughs> you know, uh, Schmidt, I mean, every, you know, I, Election. How oh, did election, you get? Yeah. Th- how did you get this? That I know John Jackson very well. He's the cast director who, who does all of his yeah. films. I had done a play with him, and I've been trying. You know, so nice I, I, guy. I, I call him like a crazy person. Good for you. You know. Um, yeah. At the time, I was in New York. Crying I was, and begging doesn't always work, right? I was I was in New York. I was doing um, that same production I just mentioned, The Love Lost and What I Wore. That's Nora Ephron's it's last Nora Ephron. play. Mm-hmm. It's a and beautiful she, play. Yeah, it was not uh, long afterwards that she passed away sadly um so i'm really really glad that i got to work with her before that um did you know she was sick i did not She's not a clue yeah. she was just such a like a powerhouse and um but i was doing that play at the time in new york city and my agent said you know you should audition for this role but you're gonna have to put yourself on tape because you're in new york and they're not at the moment and i remember i fought it i was like they're not gonna cast me in this can we just call it like it is she's supposed to be like a young party girl like half hawaiian they're gonna cast some like asian model come on half hawaiian i didn't know that yeah because my name was kai k-a-i and technically yeah i was i was half hawaiian and um but i often do this sounds really strange but sometimes like asian guys give me like the double take because they think i'm asian from far away (laughs) because i have like that going on (laughs) but um and we all do if you go back far enough. But anyway, um, they said, put yourself on tape. I fought it. Finally, I said, okay. And I remember at the time I was dating this guy, not even dating. I was like, am I dating him? It's very unclear. But I remember, you know, he was an actor and I thought, maybe I could get him to help me put myself on tape. That's a good excuse to get him up to my lair. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> right. And God bless, like he did. And he really did a great job. Like he had me do it uh, multiple times and like play with the lighting and, you know, really helped me. He was a good actor. And, um, and lo and behold, they, you know, I got a call back. They wanted, Alexander was going to be in New York. And uh, so I, I came in for him in person. And again, I was like, all right, I'll go in. But you know, they're not going to cast me. I mean... They just don't, they don't put people like me in movies like this. Um, Because it was, you know, it was mostly, it was a drama. It was George Clooney. It was Alexander Payne. It was, you know. And then, again, like, I was on the street one night, like, with tons of bags. It was raining. I was coming home from the gym, walking up the Upper East Side, and I got a call from my agent, and I literally was, like, jumping up and down like a crazy person. And this is the best part. I remember my agent telling me, You didn't just get the part. She said, you need to know that you were Alexander's first choice. Wow. You were the one he wanted out of all of those people. And he, God bless him, like has, A, has, I think, the power to be able to cast who he wants within reason. That's why you got it, because in those kind of movies, they usually want a certain kind of stereotypical girl. Yeah. To play the girlfriend. And so he, but he said, this is the one. And he, he really Best takes time. a long time to make his decisions. He watches the audition tapes over and over again. And, uh, and so it was just really, really thrilling, you know. And the fact that he, you know, put a woman known for like mostly comedy in this role that, you know, and, and several com- comedy people, Judy Greer, uh, uh, Rob Hubel, myself, like I think it was very smart because it is oh, such yeah. a sad movie that you needed to inject it with as much levity as possible because the situation was sort of absurd. So that was just a real big, huge, because everybody knows George Clooney. That's the thing you can tell your oh. family and they're like, oh, we've heard of him. Yes, all of a sudden you're in a movie that somebody, and then they go to see the movie and they go, oh, but it was so sad. <laughs> Do we have to take a break? Yeah, we do have to take another break. We're going to be back in just a second with Mary Birdsong. We need four hours to talk to you. Right? We need four hours. We'll be back in just a second. Stay with us. Don't change that channel. Guys, serious business radio voice, everybody. Okay, here we go. Let's just play. We should put music on and just dance for a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I have to stop and say one thing. I have to say two words. 
Hey, 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 hey. Who shall join us and the rest of the Tea Radio V. Ready? Are we on? Give me some music. Watch this. Ready? Wait, are we rolling? No. Oh, is this real? Like, I was just totally is it kidding. Oh, let's start again. Start again. Say, say that. Okay. Start again. Keep going. Start. I could do real jazz. <laughs> do jazz hand. Starting that out. was a shtick. I was doing a shtick. Well, the hair is blonde, it's dye. Yeah, Just because you don't have any hair, and he doesn't have any hair, and I have all this all fake right, start hair. Again, start again, start Fine. Again. How's the hair and the I feel like I'm in a puzzle. <laughs> any show you can have, I can have better. Any show you can have, I can have better. Ready? Are we filming all this? Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> this is the good stuff. You're short and you know it. I know it was a lot of hodgepodge, but that's good, right? Yeah, hodgepodge is good intro. to cut. Let's do the intro one more time. So Menopause. Uh, uh. Hi, this is Danny Woodburn, and you're watching T Radio V. Did it come up? Is it all right? There we go. He's good. Hey, we're back at Absolutely Jason's Drew. Why don't we show a little clip from Descendants and show your work with Mr. George Clooney, who I also work with Ooh. on one of his failed series. Hey. Hey. There he is. And How's it going? incredibly cool. nice. Oh, oh she's my looking God. a little pale lately, all cooped up here. And I just know she'd be mortified if nobody helped her out with some lipstick and blush. I know she'll That's Rob me. Hubel playing my husband. Of course, guys getting her all caught up on all the latest gossip. Well, I don't I love how high George's later. pants are. Oh, and Matt, uh, on the way here, we stopped by and put some more meals in your fridge, so already to nuke. Yeah, Thanks. Mm -hmm. I think that was, they were trying their hardest to so make So what's them, the latest anyway, Matt? Any updates? You know, sort of like a frumpy middle-aged. Oh, hey, Matt. Is this a bad time? Uh, no, no, we're just fighting. Uh, come on in, you want some this coffee? This is quite a break you want to drink? in terms of your career. It's Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. About something stupid. Because before this, stupid. people, you know, and I can see why they would. They were like, oh, yeah, yeah she, does, she just does, like, comedy and stuff. She just, like, sketch comedy. It's like, you no, that's only because anything. that's what you've that's seen. The whole point. You don't, I do. It doesn't He's have to so be work. You don't have to clean and, and buy a new outfit. Oh, I'm supposed to leave it to And think up a goddamn know. theme cocktail. Oh. And he was also party. very generous. Invite people over a lot to of the, um, drink whatever we have. Like when I had to, you know, for sight lines and stuff, he would okay? still do scenes with me, even though he wasn't on camera. Back there is. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Who is he? Does she love him? Who is he? Matt. Did they choose that I'm sorry to put you in that position, but I'm not really the no, one who No, but I remember there, them saying to, I? I'd like to know who the guy keep is it dark like it was, because it was a little darker than it is right now. Matt, you're angry. And you're to keen powers of observation. Wow. Okay, you know what be as tan as possible cool. without doing like a spray tan kind of thing, Troy, but just get a lot of sun. You don't know him. Mark, don't you even. Shame on you. You're supposed to be your friend. Well, guess what? I'm Matt's friend I'm too. Okay, and this is a unique and dramatic situation. Go and I would want to know. Yeah, well, don't betray her when she's not even here to defend herself. And this was an entire day. Matt. This scene. Look, you might not be able to hear this right now. But it's not her fault. Over and over and over and over and over again. Your really marriage was not. You your... I think they're gonna she find was lonely. Ready to talk to me. To clean Although you know I mean? it. Because later on in the in the scene, I have to like break down in right. tears and stuff, and he's yelling at me, and and so it was a real challenge. Like by the, you know, as the day went on, I joked that like you know I would think of somebody that would make it, you know, I would think of somebody who was dying, you know, in every take, you know, and I was like started to run out of people, so I'd be like, oh, what if my mailman got sick? Ah! Oh, look at that guy, he's walking down the street. What if he got hit by a car? Like, I was just, like, desperately reaching for stuff. Did that, they use the take that you liked? Um, I honestly don't remember because we did it so many times. I mean, from the day, that was the first scene we shot of the day, and it was the last scene we shot of the day. And my, like, close-up or my coverage, whatever, wasn't until the very last That's what happens stuff. to a lot of uh, supporting actors is that we get our stuff. Right. When they get to our side, 
it's the night there's no more time yeah. and we don't want to go into overtime and, and it was like it was downright comical because you know in Hawaii like these sudden rainstorms come up really quickly and right. then the sun's shining at the same time it's very confusing but there are these big patio glass doors in that set uh, a house it was an actual house and um, and all of a sudden like right before my big shot like the take it starts pounding rain against the patio door so we had to hold uh. So I'm sitting there like trying to, you know, and everybody's like at this point kind of punchy and like George is being really sweet and trying to make everybody laugh in between takes. And I'm just like, can we please just get this over with? I was so nervous. And I remember Alexander at one point sort of, you know, whispering into my ear, like, I really need you to just lose it, you know. And so I did. And the best part was the next day we just had to do some minor stuff on the staircase or something, nothing emotional or whatever. And I remember Alexander came up to me and he like held my cheeks in his hands, like oh. an like an ant, you know, like an old Jewish ant would, like oh, boo, boo, boo. but he squished my cheeks together and he said, "I am so glad I cast you." Oh wow! And I think he was just he too was relieved because you know it was it was a, ch- a risk sort of to to cast me in this role and and even Rob for that matter, you know what I mean? We were comedy people and. For all I know, there might have been people that were like, ah, that's, I don't think that's smart. So I think he was just relieved that we kind of, we pulled it off for that first day of, because it was the first day of shooting the entire movie. Oh, gosh. You know what I mean? And then I, before they had had like a Hawaiian uh, blessing ceremony. I remember there was like a, a priest and a Hawaiian spiritual guy. And they did this whole ceremony to bless the production. Um, really? Yeah. And they were really respectful of a lot of sort of um, suspicious is the wrong word, but you know, sort of mystical beliefs and things of of the locals. Um, they were really, really respectful. Like you're not supposed to, I don't know, shoot on certain things that are pathways or just weird, you know, local lore. And there were other films that didn't do that and kind of had these really bad <laughs> outcomes. So who knows? Really? Maybe there's something to it. Because it's one of his most successful movies. And it, your whole career, I think, really changed from that, don't you think? I think so. I mean, All look, I'm sudden, still I'm still in a rental apartment. You know what I mean? But, but still. But I'm working. And the big difference was I could just feel like when I walked in the room for an audition, people were a little less sort of like arms crossed, let's see what you can do, and a little more like, hey, I really loved you in, you know, The Descent. Like they had, it just kind of You're gave you a little bit of a, you know, cachet. an edge walking in where you'd done something that they liked and you were associated with this like really great artist. So it really helped, you know? And it, it just really changed people's images of like, oh, maybe she isn't a cop from Louisiana. You know, like... <laughs> Maybe Which she was just acting. further from who you are. Right. Although my family's from Louisiana. Oh, they are? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you were from New York. I grew up in Jersey, but my big my grandmother, we call big, big Mama. My grandmother's from Louisiana. It's so funny because uh, I, uh, I, myself, and I'm sure a lot of people struggle with that, the idea that, that who you are is who... You know, they'll go, oh, you're perfect for this. And you, you, we, you know, this is who you are. And you ain't God, I don't even know who I am. Right. I'm still trying to figure that part of myself out. Yeah. I'm constantly, tr- you know, as you get older, who are you as this older person? And I think you're doing just absolutely fabulous. Now, how Thanks. do folks get a ho- hold of you if they'd like to? Um, through the usual. Uh, you have a website, though, right? I have a website, which is marybirdsong.com. But more and more, I feel like as the years go by, I feel like that's like Pluto now <laughs> having a website. It's like it's so far away from, you know, whereas you can reach me on, you know, on Twitter.com slash marybirdsong. You can reach me on Instagram. You can reach me on Facebook. All right. Um, I, also, love, I love per- Vine. Do you? Are you doing Vines? I am obsessed with Vine. It's instant gratification. You think of us because I was too. I'm too tired and old to do like sketch comedy these days. I'm like, ugh, I don't have the energy to find a costume and a set. And they don't care. Like the people who are into Vine, there are no production values most of the time. It's how many seconds? Six, six and a half. So you really have to. It's almost like a haiku. I mean, you really have to condense it down to its, you know, bare minimum. But if you think of a sketch idea or just a funny line, you can just put it up. While you're waiting in line at the bank, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so isn't that great? On that lovely uh, creative haiku moment, <laughs> Mary, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, absolutely, Jason Stewart. Yes.
Everybody take care. I'll talk to you next week. You are watching T-Radio V, Radio MTV.